welcome to Victoria Rumble Room, a West Coast show that attempts to deliver on local, provincial, national, international stories. Whatever's going on, we like to dig in. I'm Robin Adair, and across town, speaking of digging, I really dig this guy. He's my co-host with the most, the Croatian sensation himself, John Jurisic. And uh, John, great to uh, great to be back in the saddle. And what's going on with all these Chinese surveillance balloons? Wouldn't all of us like to know? Clearly, there was one balloon. But the others, you know, crazy, disturbing stuff. Aliens? Maybe? However... I our yeah, guy NORAD, got NORAD actually got involved and shot down one over the Yukon. I didn't think NORAD totally. even existed anymore. It was totally. Weird. Our prime minister got involved. You know, he authorized an object floating, as you mentioned, over the Yukon to be shot down. It was surprising. Like, you go, what? What? Like, Canada does military stuff? Obviously, that's <laughs> stupid and naive. We've been talking about Ukraine for months and months. Now, after the Yukon uh, shoot down, this follows uh, a, a balloon and two other floating objects taken down a week ago over the states you know indeed this appears to uh, aside from the alien uh, conspiracy theories indeed this appears to be spying by the chinese strange times robin strange times indeed they are john and uh, you know that to china despite its enormous population and military is paranoid it's a paranoid place and it does lots of business around the world, but it doesn't have a lot of natural allies. And that worries them, especially they see the United States and NATO lining up in favor of Ukraine against Russia. And they, they get nervous around things like that. Uh, it's all about surveillance. They want to know what's going on, especially with the United States arms and buildup. And uh, there also could be some of this surveillance coming from Russia. Who knows? Or are they cooperating? We don't know yet what's really going on. These are strange times indeed. Yeah, and you know, now we're going. Now we're seeing the what aboutism. You know, coming out of China and Russia, like Americans have spy satellites. Likely Europeans have spy satellites. <laughs> so everyone is gathering information about other countries. We're all circling the globe, looking at each other to some degree. But for the Chinese to get caught and claim these intruders are really weather forecast balloons is a big joke. It It is the big lie, <laughs> aside from all the other big lies that exist in our community these days. However, let's shift talk it through. Shift topics, Robin. <laughs> oh, man. Prime Minister Trudeau has been up to other things that we need to talk about. Okay? Pretty big stuff. Big, big money stuff, stuff besides shooting down balloons, for sure. <laughs> And uh, a lot of it surrounds health care, John. Uh, yeah. Provincial premiers, they've gathered in Ottawa recently, and uh, they talked with the feds about getting better transfer payments for federal responsibilities for health care, which they say are lacking. And uh, Mr. Trudeau has made an offer. He calls it a great step forward. The premiers say, well, it's not really quite enough. The government of Canada is proposing a package that transfers $46.2 billion to the provinces over 10 years. This for medical care, including shortfalls in staffing and hospital intake. Mr. Trudeau trumpeting this is a great deal for the country. The province is saying actually what they were looking for was $28 billion a year, not every 10 years. And so this falls far short. Premier Eby is saying we'll take it. It's not enough, but we'll take it. And Health Minister Adrian Dix is saying, step in the right direction, but there's a lot more needed. Meantime, our local medical advisory and advocacy groups are rallying because they still are calling for better services. Yeah, that's right, Robin. B BC Healthcare Matters is again doing extraordinary work to rally support for a stronger BC medical system, a virtual town hall was recently staged featuring Dr. Fred Voon and Dr. Vanessa Young, discussing why emergency rooms are at over capacity. Why are all of these folks in the hallways? And also why urgent primary care centers, also known as UPCCs, around the province are not living up to their potential. I I, I mean, that, that, that I'm curious about that as well. Recently recognized, by the doctors for BC, 
for her advocacy work, huge congratulations, is Camille Curry, who organized and led this town hall meeting. And it's our good luck and good fortune, not only in the past, but, but right now to speak to Camille about what needs to happen in BC to improve our struggling medical system. So let's zoom her in. Now joining us in the Victoria Rumble Room, a regular guest, somebody that we've really enjoyed uh, having on this program on a number of occasions is Camille Curry from BC Healthcare Matters. And uh, Camille, you've been recognized by the Doctors of British Columbia, a special award for the work you've done and your organization have done in furthering healthcare in the province. And uh, I guess the question is, uh, what is your message now moving forward? I mean, obviously, there's still a lot of work ahead. Yeah, uh, you know, it's just like you just said, there is so much work ahead still. So I am incredibly honored to get this award. I am also incredibly honored to have such an amazing group of people around me at BC Healthcare Matters helping us to get to these kinds of accomplishments and recognition. And so I hope every one of them knows how much I'm grateful for the part that they have played in this, you know, last 12 months that we've dealt with addressing issues about this crisis. Um, but it's not over. You're right. We have seen lots of great things come forward in the last 90 days, 120 days, but still lots of unanswered questions. And also a lot of people still struggling and suffering in this system. So it is absolutely important that we, the people, the medical professionals, the government, understand that this still has to be the number one priority for everyone right now. Camille, congratulations uh, from my end on, on all the hard work over the past year. We've done a couple events together, which have been so fun. Uh, let, let's sort of dig a little bit deeper now that we have an opportunity to interview you. Uh, you've Your team clearly worked very hard uh, to lobby government, you've made a ton of noise. It's amazing. Volunteers are the core of your your um, business structure and your business model. That takes up a ton of time, a ton of energy. Are you a little bit concerned about keeping up the pressure into twenty twenty three and beyond with this with with the model that you've adopted here? You know, I'm actually really not concerned about keeping up the pressure. I have very little doubt that we can keep up the pressure that we have been able to put forth up to right now. But what I'm hoping to do is to actually increase that pressure. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm not even really doubting that. We've had a ton of outreach lately for more volunteers wanting to come forward to help our organization. And I think, you know, it all just is part of what we've been able to build over the last 12 months, showing people that every one of us can make a difference. And, you know, it doesn't have to be a huge commitment. It's sometimes, you know, more minimal commitments um, for time and effort, what they can put forward to our organization, but so incredibly helpful and so pivotal to us being able to keep this pressure on. So, no, I can actually quite happily say I'm not doubting we're going to be able to keep this up. You know, it was uh, fun to see you marching in front of the Empress Hotel this last year because we had the provincial premiers and we had the federal government there as well. And we had national media all looking at what doctors at BC were doing. And I'm not saying directly because of that. Now we have Justin Trudeau, the prime minister, talking about doing a new deal with the provinces for health care. But that's what it sounds like. It sounds like the, the federal government is now going to come to the table with more money. If indeed that happens, if there is more federal money coming to the provinces, where do you think it needs to be directed first or what are the priorities? Well, you know, our priority at BC Healthcare Matters actually is fairly in line with much of the messaging that we've been hearing from the federal government. And so I won't answer your question specifically about where I think money should be put, because I think there are very capable individuals in the government, as well as the healthcare um, health ministry that can make that decision. But that said, I continuously want to highlight my concern that the provincial government needs to have a plan in place before receiving any more additional funds from the federal government, because I do not believe that they have proven to us, the people, that they have have proven to their fellow members of government that they are making the best choices and spending the money in the right places to have a truly impactful change on the end users, us the patients. 
And I think that is what needs to stay at the forefront. And I think what has been at the forefront of many of these discussions between provinces and the federal government is that there needs to be a plan in place. We are talking about the need for a culture change around health care. Um, and so just to throw money at it, I don't think that is the solution. I'm not saying I don't believe we don't need more money, but I think it has to be done very wisely, very appropriately, and there needs to be a plan. Camille, I'm often asked to uh, act as a business in a business consultant capacity with with uh, with different um, organizations and business across. So my questions around organization. Uh, to you again. So I have a second one. Uh, how can you engage more British Columbians uh, and expand the size and reach of BC Healthcare Matters? For example, uh, are there plans for potential webinars, maybe uh, online forums? What are your next steps in building your team and your brand? Yeah, it's an excellent question, John. And that's absolutely what we've been working on over the last um, about 60 days here is where do we go from here? What do we grow BC Healthcare Matters into? Um, you know, going back to your first question, how do we keep the energy going? How do we keep the pressure up? And so we are very excited to announce that in the next 30 days or so, we will be having some um, new initiatives coming forward. And one of one of them will be yeah hosting town halls so we're going to start hosting some of our own so that we can give an opportunity to talk about the issues that um, surround this crisis to talk about the issues that the people are feeling and bring some really you know shine some light on that because it deserves that and needs that we're also going to have guest speakers that can actually take questions and provide some answers that the people of bc want to know um, we do hope that at some op at some point we will have the opportunity to also have some government officials, some health ministry officials, some health authority individuals come on and speak with us because we think that is a really important aspect to where we go from here. It's conversation. It's about exchange of thoughts, suggestions, learning from past experiences and moving forward from errors or mistakes that have been made to get to an improved situation. Um, so our hope, you know, as we've tried over the last 12 months, we will continue to do is to bring information, bring information forward and highlight things so that um, they are digestible for residents of British Columbia, because we know that we get a lot of information thrown at us and a lot of different sources from media. And we want to help make things just a little bit more clear for individuals to really understand what it is that's going on right now. I think all the things you're saying are really important, Camille, and uh, certainly we uh, we like to help promote it along with you and and make sure that people are aware of the issues. A big issue that your organization has promoted over this last year, and the thing that's really caught the public's attention is a million British Columbians without a family doctor. I think the the family doctor crisis has been if you like the low-hanging fruit, but there's a lot of other problems in the healthcare system. We have huge waiting lists and people sitting for hours at our emergency rooms. We have these primary care centers that A, can't always find doctors, and B, again, you, you have to put your name in and wait quite some time to see anybody. So there's a lot of issues that need to be addressed. Uh, for example, the, the, healthcare, the healthcare centers, the, uh, uh, the primary care centers, which we've, we've talked a lot about, do you see this really changing in 2023? Is there going to be significant improvement now that the government has shifted some of its focus and shifted some of its programming? Well, my opinion is that it absolutely needs to be something that gets changed and addressed in 2023. There is no longer time to wait for that. Um, and that's for a couple of reasons. It is to do with, as you said, the 1 million residents that don't have access to a family doctor. And those individuals count on primary care centers, on walk-in clinics. And so maybe we can't snap our fingers and make all the needed family doctors appear right now. So instead, we need to see change to the structures that currently exist right now that need to be providing for these people that are in dire need. Um, I think the government has brought forward some initiatives that I can see linking into the primary care structures, the urgent primary care centers. Um, but I do have a lot of concerns that there aren't enough conversations taking place around why are these centers not properly staffed? It's not simply a lack of human resources. We know that from research and interviews we've done with medical professionals. We'd also like to know um, why 
community health centers seem to be taking so long to get approval processes. These are really important steps that we hope are going to be examined by the government this year, but not only examined, also addressed and moved on. We can't keep sitting on these issues and the people that depend on these sites for their primary care absolutely need change here and now in 2023. The primary care crisis is absolutely part of the effects that we're seeing on the hospitals, the ERs, the, the need for bed admissions when individuals aren't getting primary care soon enough. And so they're waiting too long till diseases progress. It has to do with long-term care facilities, you know, so we want to really bring back and focus for everyone to see how primary care has, um, it's a, you know, it has a fingerling into every aspect of our healthcare system. Camille, my final question. Um, and thank you once again, great information, great advocacy, much appreciated. I want to talk about foreign doctors. We hear the government uh, saying the right things about bringing in more foreign doctors to meet the immediate shortage in BC communities. But has the process really changed? Will we notice a lot of new foreign doctors for the next couple of years? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a really interesting topic. As you said, the government has said all the right things and it sounds incredibly promising. Um, and it's a bit of a twofold issue, I guess, because there is those conversations we have where we discuss bringing in individuals from other countries that are trained and still remain in other countries and easing their um, acceptance process into our province. And I have more concerns surrounding that and how quickly that will in fact happen or also what the other repercussions or impacts might be um, to those countries, frankly, as well, or the competition as well between provinces right now for other countries' doctors. I think that where I see the most hope for this initiative would be in being able to streamline the process for the healthcare professionals that are already residing in British Columbia and not acting in those professional capacities because of the barriers that they have faced for getting these approvals. So we're going to be watching this very closely because the gov the premier and the health minister did put out there some numbers, some timelines. And so we're very eagerly watching to see, will there be an impact? And when where we do expect to see an impact will be more in that area. It will be transitioning individuals that are already here located in the province, because that's a really great fast track, easy way to also help the one million individuals. Um, but once again, we do have some concerns surrounding metrics, you know, did the government, how are they tracking how many um, individuals currently have a family physician or not, you know, we throw that number 1 million around, but we have our suspicions, it's quite above that. And if we're not tracking or measuring that number, how do we know if this new initiative is going to be impactful? How will we know if less people are unattached, if more people are now attached to these foreign doctors that have um, become full-fledged physicians in BC? So I have a lot of concerns still around how are these things going to be measured? Camille Curry does such incredible work. You know, it occurs to me she could be an excellent politician. She's so articulate and... Uh, I think right now, though, she's doing more effective work right where she is. BC Healthcare Matters is making a difference. So uh, we really commend them, Johnny. And uh, before we go, I just want to talk a little bit about another issue that's really springing up in the streets, the mean streets of British Columbia, Vancouver, Victoria, other cities across the province, Nanaimo, the Fraser Valley, right, right across the spectrum, we have this ongoing damage to public property, broken windows, people breaking in, um, people on the streets, and it's happening at the same time as tourist season, John, and it's just terrible. That's right, Robin, and, and as all of our over 800,000 viewers know, that we actually, we've, we've been in business for a long time, you and I, we're, we're, we're very familiar with how this runs and all of the, all of the risks, and and here now, Victoria and Vancouver have been particularly uh, struggling with vandalism and street crime. It it makes running a business so difficult. It, but here's a problem: civic politicians are saying too much is being said about this, and things are not as bad as the police and the media would have you believe. 
but smashed windows and and doors and 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 ruining businesses tell a different story and and the businesses are paying for it they have to pay the deductible every time one of those windows is broken and uh, i know there's businesses now scratching their heads saying why should i continue doing this why should i stay in a downtown core if it's not going to be dealt with there's a lot of clear evidence of uh, serious problems in our downtowns and uh, it, we have littered with broken windows and break-ins and crime and disorder and uh, recently a large window broken at the victoria public library and a bookstore was robbed following the smashing of glass dangerous people are walking our streets right now and you know they're being arrested and then what happens hmm. it's catch and release we need facilities for our addicts we need to help the mentally uh, challenged that are struggling in our streets they need to be evaluated but if they break the law, they need to be evaluated in a secure environment. They shouldn't be out on the street again. And, and you know, this isn't just a police problem. This is everyone's problem. And it's time for real solutions. So uh, on that happy note, John, I guess it's time to wrap this show. Robin, I, I couldn't agree with you more. No more studying, no more debate, no more committees. Fix the problem. You know, what's evident from our show this week is that there's no end of news. No end of news, Rob. It's been a great show. And we really appreciate all of the support we've been receiving over these past, is it now two years? Gosh, just it about like just, just short of two years, John. Oh my gosh. As we deliver the Victoria Rumble Room, I mean, it's been a labor of love. I just love doing this, as apparently all of our viewers, 800,000 of them and you might have noted i referenced that earlier that's quite a milestone for us we've reached that on to a million robin i can't believe it and it's so wonderful to hear from everyone continue to send in your comments good or bad whether you like us or not and here's how you can watch our show as many already have facebook is a is the heart and followed by twitter lots of activity there lots of comments although they're short um, and, uh, and, and, and obviously a YouTube where we host almost 200 of the videos we've done to date. Uh, we have numerous news groups, which you're going to see all around you, uh, that we encourage you to participate in on Facebook and Instagram and obviously TikTok. So please pass those links on to your community and your network. And for now, I continue. I guess I don't want to say that for now. I will always. Remain your Croatian sensation, John Jurisic. And uh, it's just an honor to be on a show with you, John. So I get to say I'm Robin Adair and rumble on. <laughs>